Okay. So I'm going to talk about the power of prayer, which is very important. Uh, you have heard prayer that um, I've written down some important facts before I start teaching. Um, how to position yourself in prayer, number one. Um, number two, prayer is more than talking and I'll explain those things. Number three, yeah, Kala, she's not around today. I wanted her to write these points, but, but it's fine. Uh, prayer is Lent. That's number three. Number four, prayer is an art. That's number five, prayer is an art, like A-R-T. Then number six, prayer has to be taught. Number seven, prayer has a procedure. And so I'm going to talk about prayer because a lot of people do not understand why some prayers are not answered and why some prayers are answered. Prayer is not just making noise. Prayer is not just talking. Prayer Prayer is more than just what you hear about. So in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, then we are going also to look at the Lord's Prayer in depth. So in, in Matthew chapter 5, I'm excited about this because I want you to know how to pray. So Matthew chapter five, verse six, it says, uh, it's very important that you understand Matthew chapter five, verse six said, blessed are they which do anger and first after righteous for they shall be filled. Now, Prayer is about being hungry. You need to be hungry. Hungry. You need to hunger for God's will. For the righteous. What is to be righteous is to have a right standing with God. So you have to be hungry after like thirsty. It's not something that should just be words only. Words mean nothing. Prayer is not just talking. That's why Jesus said, this is how you have to pray. In, in Matthew chapter 6, in Matthew chapter 6, it's a very famous scripture, but there, this, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 says, and when, and then when you pray, you shall not be like hypocrites, uh, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue, in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of, of men. Very I say unto you, they have their reward openly. Okay, that was verse five. Verse six says, But thou, when you, you thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when you thou shut and you shut the door, pray to the father which is in the secret that your father which sees you in the secret shall reward you openly. Prayer can be used as well as a way of showing, exposing your spirituality, how spiritual you are. But prayer it's not, we cannot judge the loudest and the quietest because prayer is an art. Prayer is something that is not just words, but it's something that you learn as time goes on. You learn to pray as time goes on because there is a wrong way of praying and the right way of praying. Prayer also has to do with you seeking the will of God. 
It says, blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteous. Hunger, how do we use hunger? It's when you want to eat food. You, wanna, you want to eat food, you're hungry one first. You need to be wanting to follow God. You must, yeah, you must desire to follow God. Now, prayer is a combination of the word of God and your feeling. Your, the word of God and your feeling. In other words, you must know the word of God to pray collectory. Why? Because witches do pray to demons, to the devil, and he does respond to them. And many other people pray, I mean, but what's the difference between the dark world that pray and you pray to the true and living God. Number one, you must understand the nature of God. Who is God in your life? How is God like? What is his nature? Number one, God's nature is love. Number two, God's nature, he is everlasting. He never dies and you'll never be defeated. And he does not have days. He's ancient of days. God is unlimited. He cannot be measured by words. He cannot be measured by any amount of power or nuclear power. He is all powerful, almighty. Now, the Bible talks about pray without ceasing. Praying without ceasing simply means contacting heaven constantly to be part of your life. Praying without ceasing is participating with heaven constantly without ceasing. Never have a day to live on earth. Have every single day living in heaven by praying without ceasing. Prayer is an art of an attitude toward God, is an art of an expression toward God. It's an art of just expressing yourself. You want God in your life. Blessed are those that hunger for righteous. Blessed are those that hunger. The, the, you must hunger. You must say, God, I need you in my life. I need your presence. I need your glory. I need your power. And, and when you, we lead about the prayer, we call it the Lord's prayer, but it's actually our prayer because the Lord does not need the prayer because Jesus was in the natural. He had to give an example. We call it the Lord's prayer. No, it's John's prayer. It's a, Elica's prayer, is Hope's prayer, is Wade's prayer, is Camilla's prayer. This is how you're supposed to pray. You have to understand it's very important because many people, the seven, they pray in vain. There are people that fast, no results. There are people that pray, no results. There are people pray. You know, I was taught that you need to pray until it hurts. You need to pray until your needs are bruised. And I did that. I knelt down and I prayed and prayed. Then I realized that my prayer is not about being on my knees. It's about being in the knees of my heart. Is my heart kneeling before God? Is my heart surrendering to God? When I do in the natural kneeling, it means nothing if I'm, my heart is not kneel, kneeling before God. Yes, kneeling physically, being portrayed before God, the form of demonstrating that you're serious, they're important. But the most important thing is an art. It's an art of prayer, A-R-T, where your heart really wants God. Prayer as a mission, a prayer has got a purpose. Prayer. What is it that you want to 
achieve in your prayer? What is it that you want to accomplish? It's the same thing that I said. Now, when the scripture says prayer without ceasing, in a natural, that's almost impossible to pray without ceasing because you have to be constantly praying. But actually, it simply means do not focus your mind on things, on the earthly things. Let your mind be constantly focused on the Lord. Let your mind be, have this mind that was in Christ that is always constantly seeking the Lord. What is your attitude today toward prayer? What is your attitude toward God? Because your attitude is a key for everything. As I read First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, it says, rejoice always, that's chapter 16, rejoice always. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. Why? It says pray without ceasing and it says, Give thanks in all circumstances. Why? Because not every prayer is powerful. But the prayer that is directed to the nature and the character of God, that's a powerful prayer. Because there's an idol worship. It's also, they call it a form of prayer. There's worship of a human being and the dead. They call it a form of worship. What's the difference? Why is your prayer important? Because your prayer is important because you, you're not just praying to an object, you are praying to your creator. Number one, apart, apart, of, apart from knowing God as your, your savior, your father, you must know God as your creator. You must establish that thought that God created the the things that we see and the things we do not see. And we must establish the thought that God will never be defeated and he has never been defeated. And he is all powerful, almighty. He can do anything and he can accomplish anything he wants to accomplish on earth without any single interruption. But God has delegated his authority to his sons. He sits on the throne, but sons, we're not, right on, we're not yet on the throne, but we are, need to get to work. We need to accomplish things on his behalf. God is working through us. We can stop anything through his power, through his nature, his name, through his word. We have to understand when we pray, we're praying into his nature. We are praying into who he is. We are praying into his power, into a, as limited power. Do you have problems? Whatever problem you have, God is way greater than that problem. Do you have a solution? Do, do you have things that do not have a solution to? God is more than able. But you have to understand that when you pray, you are contacting the unlimited source. When you pray, you are reconnecting yourself to the power source, which is God's source. You have to understand that prayer is not a weapon. Your heart that knows how to pray is the weapon. Your heart is a weapon. Why? This, this seven, Matthew chapter five, verse Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 is very important. But when you pray, use vain words, repetition, as they even do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. He says, you pray for nothing. You spend, you say so many repetitions of words, nothing happens. But if your heart is connected to those repetitive words, your prayer is powerful. But if it's just the lip service, 
lip service, lip speaking produces nothing but speaking from the heart mixed with the word of God. You have to understand that your spirit is God's conduit. It's God medium. It's God's connection. You do not connect God with your mind. You connect God with your spirit. Then your spirit gets connected with your heart. Your, your spirit is God's socket for the powers to pass through. Power from heaven to pass through you. Hallelujah. Actually, I could call it is you are a generator. You are the generator that God makes you a power source. Verse seven, when you pray, you use verse eight it says, be not therefore like unto them for your father knows what things you have in need of before you ask. In other words, when you are genuine in your prayer, you are addressing the real need of your heart. Remember, prayer is an art. A-R-T. It is something that is in your heart and you know the nature of God and you pray, you are, your spirit is the light. Your spirit is the lamp. Let's go to Proverbs. That's very powerful. It's very powerful. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. Yeah, Proverbs chapter 20. It's very important that we understand the power of prayer, especially in these days. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27 says, the human spirit is the light of the Lord, is the lamp of the Lord that sheds light on one's innermost being. Yes, you can go ahead, hop and read it. Repetitive of the word is good. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, go ahead and read it. The human spirit is the lamp of the Lord that sheds light on one's inmost being. So your spirit is your conduit, is your connection, is your medium, is your connection between your, your spirit is God's portal for God to come through to do everything he wants to do. So the lip service and repetition of words just by your lips and you, because you are smart, you know how to speak and world, the world is enticed by good speakers, they're enticed by good words. But sometimes you may find somebody who does not even know how to say something or speak something, but they are like a power when they're around, why? Because they are hard, they're out of, they are hard. It's connected to God. Let's look at Anna in the Bible. Anna, did not say anything to God, but he was crying. He was weeping because she had a big need, bigger than anyone else. All the doctors told her, that is in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9 and 20, 28. It's a quite a longer re read, but we can... Um, but I can ask, I can ask somebody to read from First uh, Samuel, not Psalms. First Samuel chapter one and verse twelve to fifteen. I can read that. Yeah. Verse twelve. He is. They answered. He's ahead of you. Hurry now. He has just come to our town today for the people have a sacrifice at the high place. 
As soon as you enter the town, you will find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. The people will not begin eating until he comes because he must bless the sacrifice afterward. Those who are invited will eat. Go up now. You should find him about this time. Verse 14, they went up to the town and as they were entering it, there was Samuel coming toward them on his way up to a high place. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed this to Samuel. About this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him, ruler over my people Israel. He will deliver them from the hand of the Philistines. I have looked on my people. Sorry, sorry Op, you are reading a second Samuel. It's first Samuel. First Samuel chapter nine. No, chapter one. Okay. Verse nine. Chapter one, verse let's jump to twelve up to fifteen up to seventeen. All right. First Samuel chapter nine. No. First Samuel number one huh? verse nine. All right. Yep. Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And he made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Verse 15, not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who was deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Amen. So the type of prayer, Anna was pouring out our soul to the Lord. She was in anguish. She was going through something. Their husband did not like her. He loved her, but he she was no use to him because she could not give him children. So he, the husband was troubled, said, Anna, I love you, but I'll, you, are not, you are not contributing anything. I want children, but here is, an, here is another woman. I don't love her, but she's fruitful. She's giving me babies. And those things does do hurt for the woman when you tell a woman is, is unproductive. But because she was in anguish and in pain, she did not know how to express her pain, but it was just inside her heart. She was bubbling inside her heart. God, God, give me a son, give me a son, give me a son. She never expressed herself collectory such that even the prophet did not even know what she wanted. She could just be seen as somebody drunk or somebody troubled. So prayer is more than repetition of words. Prayer is the heart beat, your heart beat unto the Lord. Prayer is that deep heart beat unto the Lord. That is called the secret place. The secret place is that place where no one can explain what you are feeling. No one can explain your need. No one can explain what you've gone through. You cannot know how to put it in words and you cannot share it. 
Because Anna's, it was not just about the child. It was about also being appreciated as being a woman. And that went deeper into her that she was, she went out, she went ahead and make vows. Also, if prayer is delayed, vows are important. Vows are important. I don't know about you, but I made one or two vows to God. I remember I was very sick. I thought I'm gonna die, literally. And nothing was working on me. And I made a vow, I said, God, if you heal me today, I will go back and preach the gospel because I didn't want to. I love doing business. Um, and he healed me instantly. And I knew that my destiny is preaching the gospel, no matter what. I can do all these other things. These are just number 10. Number one is God. Number one is preaching the gospel. Number one is ministering to people. That's why no matter where I'm where, where, I, where I am at, what I'm doing, I always put preaching the gospel as number one. Doesn't matter if it's one person or to a million people, because I know it's more than for me just talking to you, but it's something some had to do with my agreement with God. People can tell you, stop preaching the gospel. No, I can't. I have a commitment with me and the Lord. Or maybe try something else. It's much more better. You'll be more successful. No, no, no. The, it's more than just money. It's more than that prosperity. It's more than that. But it's, it is something that I have a commitment with the Lord. God, he, is, he honors the vows. You must understand prayer, it's something very personal. Prayer is a personal because we do not know other people's needs and other people's cry. Prayer is personal. It's so personal that no one can really explain what you're going through. Prayer should be valued. Prayer should be respected because you're not praying to an idol. You're praying to a living God. Your prayer can stop war in your own home. Prayer can stop things in your own city, in your own country. Prayer is very powerful. You don't understand how important a prayer is. Have you not noticed that around powerful people, it's either they are around powerful prophet men of God or they are around powerful wizards and magicians. It's either the two. Because in order for any to succeed in the spiritual realm, they must have some form of spirituality. But the highest power that you have is not the sorcerer's power or witchcraft power is the power of the Holy Spirit. Praying in the spirit. You want revival, you have to pray. You want your home to have peace, you have to pray. You want your working place to change, you have to pray. Prayer is more than the key, is your lifestyle, is the hair you breathe is who you are. There are so many problems in this world. You can't sort out all the problems that you're going through in this world. You cannot manage all the stress, all the need, all the unanswered questions, things that you go through. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're passing through. Prayer is not just about praying for a house or a car. Those are cheap things. Wizards can call and manifest those things. Prayer is bringing God to manifest 
his power beyond what all the powers can do, like to cure cancer, which has no sickness, has no, has no cure, to raise you up, to have that impact. Sometimes we'll, yes, you can pray, Lord, bless me with the cell phone, he'll bless you. It's powerful because you need it as your daddy. But prayer is not just limited on, on a house, on a billion dollar, on a what. Prayer, the greatest prayer is the prayer that not just pull finances you, but pull the presence of God in your life. That's a miracle to have the presence of God in your life because not everyone has that ability to experience God's presence. Not everyone has got that ability to experience the peace. Not everyone has got that ability to hear the voice of God, not hearing voices, but the voice of the living God. Prayer is more than just praying to build for a church building. Prayer is having that supernatural experience that the light of God becomes your light because you are the torch, you are the lamp, you are the lamp. Prayer is that holy communion where God begins to reveal his nature and his character and his power through you. And you start giving him what you are. You start giving him your heart. You start giving him your circumstances. That's why in the book of Thessalonians it says rejoice always. Give thanks in every situation, in every circumstance. You know why? Because when you pray, you are constantly praying, you are constantly engaging yourself with heaven. When you say pray without ceasing, means live in heaven two, 24 hours. Let, it's not just always speaking out with lips, it's also engaging your heart. Yes, with lips, it's also powerful, but also engaging your heart. Prayer is very powerful that can bring a move of God. Revival can come when people pray. Nations can change when people pray. When there was a world war, there were a group of pastors and believers that prayed in England called Russia Revival. That's how it started. They were praying. This was a time of the world war with Hitler because when God came down, the war also was ceased. That's how powerful prayer is. But I'm not talking about you praying for big things, but it's prayer, praying for yourself. Learning to pray for yourself, learning to experience God's presence, learning to have personal revival, learning to experience God's voice. Let, do you have questions about your life? Are things being troubling you? Are things... You know, things bothering you. I, I told you in the beginning, like, I told you that uh, I read in the news today that Germany now is supplying weapons to nuclear. And this, I said last week, is what I saw in the spirit, that once Germany join in, starts to support Ukraine, Ukraine will become stronger and resistible. Unresistible, I mean. And, and that came to pass, by the way, today. Um, I need to be following these trends of prophecies so we can be following them. How do I know that? It's God. Did I say to get the credit? No. I know that many of you, you are suffering in one way or another. The only way to remove those suffering is to develop a heart of prayer. Prayer brings, prayer brings heaven. The more you pray, the more victories you have. The less you pray, 
the less victories you have. Because a man or a woman who is constantly engaged with heaven, there can be no defeat impossible. There can be no defeat on that man or woman impossible. Once heaven is working on your behalf, nothing can stop you. The problem, we have long prayers. We have Pharisees and Sadducees type of prayer showing off, declaring this and that, that, but there is, it's empty in your heart. Empty words equals powerless prayer. But, but like honor, being possessed with that blessed assurance that no one else can help me give me a baby. Only God can give me a baby. And she was anguishing and she has no words, but in her heart, she knew our God. She knew that Jehovah God, if only can respond to her, she will get pregnant and conceive Samuel. And sure enough, some ally knew God from their heart. He did not even pray, he responded from their heart. It was a response from their heart. It was more than just talks or words. He said, woman, may the Lord answer you today. Why? Because he was constantly engaging with Jehovah God. When you're constantly engaging your heart with Jehovah God, your words have power. The words will produce results. Your affirmations becomes your prophecies. Your declarations becomes a law in the spirit because you are constantly engaging your heart with God. Your proclamation becomes an announcement of heaven. What you proclaim is like you announce. Why? Because you, you, you. Last week there was one woman she, from our meeting. She, she told me. She said, "I'm so broke. I only had a hundred dollars, and I gave it to your ministry." She, she had access to my number. She said. I want to just call you. I don't usually tell you what I give, but I wanted to tell you for this one to say, I gave $100 because that's all I had. I didn't even know how to respond to her. I just said, I know God will do it for you. Because things like that, they move your heart as well. She has many bills, that thousands of dollars bills. The next first they came. First she tried to get a hold of me several times when I was busy. But on Thursday, she told me, she said, you can't believe when you just declared that word. I checked my account, my account. somebody transferred $16,000 into my account. I said, wow. I said, not only that, I got another $10,000. This is only a miracle. He said $16,000 was to pay off my credit card. Then $10,000 half of it to pay my land and the other half, now I have an overflow. Then I said, wow. This was just one minute of discussion that she discussed with me. One minute of discussion. She said, I want to tell you, Rio, because I, I had some guests, so I was busy. She said, I want to tell you what happened. I said, okay, please keep talking. She said, 16,000 paid off my credit card. 10,000 came, half of it, I paid for my land and I have half of it. I said, whoo, how did that happen? That was a, a question I asked. She said, I, don't know. I don't, I'm eight even to know who transferred the money in my account. Then I said, that's God. Doesn't matter if it's your mother, if it's your uncle, or it's your friend, whoever God used, he got, they will 
their hearts will never be moved to give you if God does not intervene. When God intervenes, even your enemies wants to help you. When God begins to intervene, even your, your peop the people that have forgotten you, they will write you a check. Even the people who vowed and said, I will never help her, or I'll never help him. But when God begins to move, when your heart moves God, and God moves the hearts of many. Let's read this scripture. I'm really excited. When I begin to talk about testimonies, I get filled up with the Holy Spirit. Remember, the enemy was overcome by the testimonies. I love testimonies. A year ago, we tested, we, we celebrated Latoya's testimonies. And Latoya, there's much more coming to you. I, I decree and declare there's much more miracles coming to you, Latoya, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yeah. And this testimony I'm talking is not about Latoya. It, it's, it, she had a similar testimony like that. I've not yet gotten permission to mention the name of the person and doesn't really matter. But Proverbs 21, verse 1 to 9. Proverbs, tw Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1 and 2 and 3. If somebody can read Proverbs, pro, pro, vabes. The pro and the vabes. The doing word. Proverbs 1. 21. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. Start reading from verse 1 to 6. Okay. In the Lord's hand, the king's heart is a stream of water that he channels towards all who please him. A person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the unplowed field of the wicked produce sin. The plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. A fortune made by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor and a deadly snare. Anyways, let's stop there. Let's just start. The heart of the king. Now, who is a king? A king is anyone that has power to rule over your life. Maybe the king right now is your boss because he's the one that has got power to make laws in your life about your working place to detect your living capacity. That's a king, could be a CEO or a president uh, or a leader or a chief, a, a chiefman leader or a mayor or a governor, whoever is, it could be even a pastor or a priest, whoever is in some kind of power controlling you that you do not have power to control them. They can only question you, but you cannot question them. They can only tell you, but you cannot tell them anything. They are in power. But the Lord says, the heart's king is in the hand of the Lord. In the hand of the Lord. The live, uh, and as the live, rivers of water, he turns it wherever he will. Let me tell you. If somebody promised you to open a door for you and they have changed their mind, when, when your heart moves God's heart through prayer, God's, the heart of that woman and the heart of that man gets open and they pick up a cell phone to remember you, Nadine, and give you a call. That's powerful. Nothing is impossible with God. Even the president can pick up a phone and say, look for her. Look for Pauline, look for, for Deborah, look for John. God has got those capacities because he can control the hearts of the king. Anyone who is in leadership, he can control the heart of your landlord. 
He can control the heart of your contractor, your boss, your business, whatever business you are in, whoever has authority of a kingship, king means ruler. When you pray, their hearts are moved. That's why prayer is so powerful. When you pray, the evil arts can turn to do good. The lying can begin to speak the truth. Prayer can change people's mind. Prayer can change leaders' mind. Prayer can change whatever the mind of the person. Prayer can even change the mind of the, or, or, of the couple they're about to divorce and suddenly their heart turn, I want you back, I want you back. And you just come back together willingly, but you are going separate way, why? Because prayer can change people's heart and prayer can change a business deal that you are losing that business. Suddenly they say, come and sign this deal, come and prayer can change. Your employer's art can give you a call and said, oh, we didn't like you, but we like you now. Why? Because prayer produces favor. Prayer is an art. It's not a matter of repetition of words. It's not a matter of making noise. You can be like an Anna or you can be Elijah that shouts, God. Or you can be an Anna who just goes, <laughs> whatever. Whatever position you are in, you may not have words to verbalize it, or you can be Elijah that, that, that begins to shout to those prophets of doom. It says, he cried out for the fire, or you can be a, a David. David was a man that always cried out. Or you can be an Anna who do not have words. Prayer is an art. Prayer can be taught. You pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Why do you pray in the name of Jesus? Your entry of your prayer is very important because there are many ways to pray that are not correct. They're not correct, but they sound good. Jesus died for your sins, was crucified for you. He paid the debt that you owed. The wages of sin is death. God's eyes cannot see you because they're blinded by sin. God's ears cannot hear you because they are Branded by your sin. The Bible says God will not hear you because of your sins. God will not even look at you because of your sin. But God will hear you and will look at you because he's going to look at Jesus inside you. He's going to see the cross of how much Jesus suffered for you, how much Jesus paid the price. So when you pray in the name of Jesus, you are reminding the Father, look, I am entitled to be in your presence. Jesus did this for me. I'm entitled for you to hear me because Jesus paid for my sins. I'm entitled for the blessings because Jesus violated my curses. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus to the Father. Somebody asked me, can you pray to the Holy Spirit? Yes, when you're in Jesus, you can pray to the Father direct. When you're in Jesus, you can pray to the Holy Spirit direct. But if you are not in Jesus, you cannot pray to the Father, not to the Holy Spirit, for they do not know you. Oh, I'm excited about that. I hope you're learning something. I'm giving you too much, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. Uh, and pray for you. Hallelujah. Um, it's very powerful in the book of John. In the book of John, chapter 15, it says, uh, um,
let me give it to you. Very powerful. Okay, before that, Romans chapter 8 is 26. I wanted to say that first. It says, in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weaknesses, so we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes us through wordless groanings. Oh, the wordless. It's the same as Anna. Um, now, the Holy Spirit the, the Holy Spirit um, does not uh, know you. He only knows Jesus. The Holy Spirit knows Jesus. It's uh, very powerful for you to understand. Um, there are many scriptures. First Corinthians, the first John, first John chapter 15 says, um, for the spirit of God knows not the things of the world, but it takes that which is mine, and he gives it to you. So the Holy Spirit takes the cross and declares it to you, makes it real. He takes the suffering of Jesus and makes it real. Now, understand that if you do not know Jesus, you cannot even pray. First uh, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3 says, Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed, or no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, you understand that the Holy Spirit, when you receive Jesus Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit comes in to empower you to understand what you have received. Who is this Savior? Who is this Jesus? So the Holy Spirit is an empowerer. He will empower you to pray right. He will empower you to understand the Word of God. If you do not have Jesus, you cannot have the Holy Spirit. And if you do not have Jesus, you cannot have the Father. If somebody says, I go to God direct without Jesus, no, they pray to demons than to devils because it's only Jesus that can stop demons. It's only Jesus that can stop spirits. It's only Jesus that can stop the powers of darkness. So we are covered by the blood of Jesus is our entrance to the throne room of God where the Father is seated. Through the blood of Jesus, we have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Without the blood, the Holy Spirit can kill you. Without the blood, God the Father can kill you. Remember in the Old Testament, when people called the name of the Lord in vain, they died. Why? Because they did not have a protection of the blood. In fact, they were not even allowed to call the name of God. They used to call Yah. They can't say Yahweh. If they complete their own name, angels of the Lord strike them. You're not entitled to that. You are too sinful to call on the name of God. In, in the, the Jewish people, they still call it the secret name of God, Yahweh, something like that. They call it the secret name of God. You cannot even pronounce it until you go through the cleansing. There were rituals of cleansing that they were going through in order for you to pronounce. The sacrifices is one of them, but they had other things they needed to observe. That's when they would mention some kind of that. Uh, forgotten, I used to master those things, but it, but it simply means Yahweh God, the creator of the universe, who brings food from the ground, makes the things grow from the ground. There's so many meanings of God's name. But today you can say Jesus, which is the hidden name of God, Yahweh, Yeshua, Messiah, because of the blood. Thank God for the blood. Give God a praise for the blood. 
The blood of Jesus is your doorway for your prayer to be powerful. The blood of Jesus is your doorway to have intimacy relationship with the Father. The blood of Jesus is your doorway to understand the presence of the Holy Spirit. Without the blood, you cannot experience the power of the Holy Spirit. Without the blood, you cannot experience the Father. Oh, I want to just go direct. I don't need the Father or the Holy Spirit. No, you need Jesus. Jesus became the Son so you can become the child of God. God, God Yahweh, reduced himself to a child. And behold, the child was given unto us. Behold, a son was given unto us. He shall be called wonderful. Because Jesus called a child to feed boys and girls. You have to understand that you are the daughter and the son of God. Because Jesus, in, in John chapter 1, this 12 said, as many as have received him, they have been given the right to call God the Father. They've been given the right to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. But here is the, 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 the scripture says, those that have, as many have received him, been given the power to be sons of God or children of God. Hallelujah. Prayer unlocks heaven. It keeps heaven open. Prayer keeps demons away. Prayer keeps lack and poverty away. Prayer brings peace. Prayer brings favor. Prayer brings revelation. Prayer brings life in your body. The more you pray, the more you look like heaven. The more you pray, the more you look like Jesus. But it's not just in words or shouting. It's, it's developing that relationship where God pours himself into you and then you pour back into him. Intimacy is en enter me as I enter you. Enter me, enter mercy, enter me as I enter you. So you become one with him. All right. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this teaching on prayer, the power of prayer, especially now that people need to know how to pray correctly and right, because it's very important to know how to pray correctly. And I pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. We pray for Ukraine. We pray for believers here in the United States. And I pray for you, wonderful people, that God's hand will come upon you. I pray that God will supply, like he did for that woman, financial blessing will come upon our life. And remember, I've been saying that God has called us to uh, a thousand time blessing. I believe she received a, th a thousand time blessing. I pray that as you give, you will tap into that grace of receiving a thousand time blessing as you give today on this day, as you give unto the Lord. Don't say I've given so much. Remember that. You're about to step into a Deuteronomy 1, this, this 11. Somebody just walked into that. Just walked into that anointing. Remember, the testimony happened last week. I pray that God will intervene into your marriage. God will intervene into your business will intervene into your children. I pray that there will be order in your spirit. I pray that there will be joy in your life. I declare that spirit of the Lord, you will intervene to those that needs a miracle, that you will intervene to those that are looking for a breakthrough. 
Lord, I thank you for your presence. Many are crying. Many have challenges. This is a month and they have challenges of, of mortgages, lands, and insurances, payments, different things. Father, I pray that you bring your people to that place of an overflow that they will never think about mortgage. They will never think about car payments. They will never think about anything. They will just be thinking they will have so much that they don't even think about any of those. Heavenly Father, I pray that you intervene today. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, you know their hearts cry. I pray that you answer their hearts cry like Anna. Eli did not know what Hannah was going through. He thought she was drunk. People may not know what you're going through. They thought you may be, you cry too much or you have so much an attitude or whatever you're going through. They may not understand why you are behaving the way you're behaving. You're doing things you're doing because there's something, there's an issue in your heart. There is, there is, a, there is a situation that needs, your atten needs God's attention, God's intervention in your heart. I know there are people like that. Father, I speak that may God answer you today. Today, may God answer you. The glonings, the anguishes of your heart, may the Lord answer you today. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. And I pray, Lord, for Nadine. Even as she lost her dad, I pray that you take away the spirit of grief. But we celebrate that he lived over 80 years old. He lived a long life. We celebrate his life. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. I pray for many needs of your people today. That, Lord, you will come through right now. In Jesus' mighty name. I just see God intervening in your life. I see God coming through in your life. I see his power coming through. But I don't want you to miss this opportunity. I would like you to give today. Um, I really sense that there is a portal that has opened for blessing, just like the other woman that came to me says, I am in debt. I have no money. And God released $16,000 plus the $10,000. $16,000 was to pay all our credit cards. And $10,000 was to pay our immediate needs. And she still remained with a surprise. God will always give you a surplus. Is a God of surprise. I know many of you, you say, I need God's intervention. What is it that is in your hand right now that you want to entrust him by giving in the form of money? You want to entrust him and say, God, I want you to come through. What is it that is in your hand? What is it? What is it that is in your hand? Do not miss this opportunity. When I hear testimonies like that, I want to put a demand on that anointing. I want to put the demand on that grace. And I want to release that same grace to come upon your household, to come upon your life. That God will supply. I need him to supply. Maybe it's not finance. Maybe it's healing. Maybe it's just a certain issue that you want. And maybe it's about your son. Maybe it's about your husband. Maybe your wife. Maybe it's about work issue. Maybe it's, I don't know what is your issue right now. But as you entrust God financially and put it into this ministry, let's watch God do it. In Jesus' name. Do it, Lord. Amen. That's all I can say. Do it, Lord. Deuteronomy 1. Verse 11, let God do it. I want to lead that scripture. I don't know what deuteronomy a thousand times blessing. Maybe that's one. It, it, maybe that's what it looks like, like that woman. Because she had nothing. And when you have nothing, $16,000, it's a lot. 
Maybe some of you need 50,000. Some of you need 100,000. Some of you is a million. Some of you maybe it's just a thousand. Whatever you need. Today, as you sow into this ministry, as we, you think about going into a new month, some of you may be saying, I only have $100. Some of you may be saying, I only have $50. Some of you may be saying, I only have $1,000. Some of you may say, I have only $5,000. Whatever level of what you want to do, I believe God, the more, the more you give according to the level that moves your heart, something moves. I'm not just asking the normal giving. I'm asking for something that will move you. Will leave you with something like, wow, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to live. <laughs> you know, let God come through. Like Anna, she, she brought a sacrifice to the temple. And she, she was told, you cannot conceive, you're barren. But she cried unto the Lord. Behold, today we're talking about her. I pray that you are next on the testimony. Who'll be talking about you? Last time we talked about Litoya, how the Lord came through for Litoya, and many other people that God came through. Now we're talking about the other woman. Next time it will be your testimony. These testimonies, they'll keep growing and growing. They'll keep becoming bigger and bigger. God is a God of testimonies. He's the God of miracles. A God of miracles. I believe in miracles. I, be, I believe that Deuteronomy 1 verse 11, may the Lord multiply you a thousand times. Just, just like he promised. He promised. He promised to our forefather, Abraham. May God honor that promise today in Jesus' name. Now, we don't, have, we don't have a screen to show you how you can give, but I'm going to say how you can give as much as I can say. It. You can give by cash up. Just say His Presence Fire Ministries. When you put on cash up with a U.S. sign, His Presence Fire, it will come out, it will come out as His uh, uh, ministries with uh, a logo of fire. Then, yeah. Uh, with the dollar sign, not US sign. With the dollar sign, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. And also, you can uh, go to a place to meet Jesus on the push pay. Then you can give by credit card. You can also give by PayPal. His presence, not in his presence, no, his presence, H I S presence, his presence, fire at gmail.com. Then you can also give by fire, 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 love at gmail.com. Um, there are many, then you can give by, that's by fire, 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 love, three fires. At gmail.com, you can give by Zelle. Um, then you can also give by Venmo. His presence, fire. You can look for it to show up by Venmo. And, uh, and if you have any other questions, please do send us a message. Um, yeah. Do send us a message or you can type here, say that. Uh, or if you're having any problem, please let us know. We'll be able to help you because I don't want you to miss a blessing today. I really feel today, uh, this March 27, March 27, is really, there's something connected to your own personal breakthrough. Father, we thank you for this miraculous. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Next time I'll figure out how to put it on the screen myself so that, so that you can uh, always have that. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the praise and the glory. 
I pray for all the givers today, just as you did for Latoya, just as you did for the other person, just as you did for other hundreds and hundreds of people that I know that I cannot mention their name because the amounts were just so big. I just pray that you will do it for every person on this Zoom and every person on Facebook in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.